Hello and welcome again to this 3D Live screencast at Book of Pals with me, Teacher Marco. And uh, I'm here again to help you with your reasoning through language arts subject of your GED. Um, this is my sixth video um, about the topic testing basic English usage specifically in eliminating informal or non-standard words. So this is another exciting topic and if you notice if you have been watching uh, the videos that I have been making all of these are related to your skill and mastery of the uh, usage of uh, uh, of usage of standard English which is really important in your GED test. Um, okay, so before we begin, um, I do encourage you to please subscribe in our channel, hit the like button as well, and don't forget to share this video so that we will be able to assist more students and uh, people in need of assistance on their GED test. So let's begin. So, like what I mentioned a while back, uh, we are on this portion already. Most of the topics, all of the topics here, where my cursor is moving, are already finished. Um, so, we're almost halfway. Right. We're halfway, yeah. So, we still have a few topics left. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start with our topic for today, eliminating informal or non-standard words. So what do we mean? What are informal and non-standard words? How do we know that, right? Um, spoken English is often different from written English. So spoken English tends to... Uh, Let's say be more casual and informal, like how I am um, talking right now. All right, um, I sound casual and not too formal. So when you're editing a text or your essay, you need to eliminate or remove these less formal and non-standard words or expressions. This uh, in order to make the written text more formal because that's what we need in the test. Okay, for instance, let's take a look at an example. The home team should try and win the game. Oh my god, <laughs> right? We'll talk about this later, like the word uh, try, try and together, okay? Try and win the game. Uh, if you combine try and the word end, this may not sound correct to your ear, but the correct and formal way to say this is this. The home team should try to win the game, not try and win the game. So, the meaning of the first sentence isn't clear. It seems to suggest that the home team should try and also win. So, two different actions, right? Which is intended, uh, which is not intended really for the meaning. We're, we're used to saying this because it's what it's how our folks used to say it, you know? It's, it's a habit that we picked up, so we have to eliminate those. By the way, contractions are also not used as much in written standard English, so it is best to use two complete words. So isn't, should be is not, and aren't, should be are not. Another one, slang, should not be used in formal written standard English. For example, the expression, what's up? Alright, you don't use that. It should be changed to what is going on or what is happening instead of just saying, what's up? Right? <laughs> Alright, and uh, 
the words, the non-standard words that I was telling you a while back, try and, uh, I'm going to show you, and we call them plague words. Plague, like, uh, it's a disease. Now, it's something that is uh, not good, but it's in our body, all right? So, we need to get rid of those, so I call them plague words. All right, there you go. Here's the first batch of the words, and also, this sounds redundant. You can just say and, or just the word also, but not them together. And or, uh, when this construction is used outside of the legal world, most of the time it is neither necessary nor logical. Try using the word or the other. Uh, sometimes... Uh, we see them in legal papers and or, or when we see them in instruction materials. But when we're writing a, an important uh, essay paper, like the GED test for RLA, we don't use these two words. As to weather, uh, no. Let's just use a single word, weather. Basically, essentially, totally, these are fillers, <laughs> especially when we're talking, okay? These words seldom add anything useful to a sentence. So try the sentence without them, and almost always you will see the sentence improve. We're just so used to them because it, it fills the dead air when we're talking, but, you know, that doesn't... that. You know, that doesn't work when we're trying to write an essay. Being that or being as. Okay. Uh, let's just change this to word to, to because. Alright. It makes you sound like you're smart. But just use the word because. Considered to be. Just re remove the word to be. Just say considered. Sounds better. Due to the fact, did you mean like because, right? Or due to, just say due to the il due to illness, right? Or you know, just say the word because. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make you smarter if you're being wordy or you're using uh, this combination of words. Each and every, just use one or the other. Each or just every, equally as, no, just word, just use as or equally. So something can be equally important or as important as, but not equally as important. Okay, etc. We don't use that abbreviation. Okay, so he or she, if we're not sure about the gender, um, okay, so this is a convention created to avoid gender bias in writing, but it doesn't work very well and it becomes downright obtrusive, it appears often. Use he or she or pluralize them. <coughs> They, <laughs> we, so you can avoid their problem uh, of the gender-specific pronoun altogether. So, interesting. Uh, it is better to show how or why something is interesting than just saying the word, it is interesting. Just describe it, it's better. In terms of, okay... Alright, try to remove this in your essays and let's see um, the big change that will happen. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> this is common for a lot of my students. Uh, but, you know, it, it doesn't really sound that good in, in written form. <laughs> Alright. Um, let's see, literally. <laughs> um, this word might be confused with literarily. Um, 
So a seldom used adverb relating to authors or scholars and their various professions literally should not be used in academic prose. Simply remove it from the sentence. The meaning of your sentence will not change. For example, the orcas were dying, literally. Of course, if we say they're dying, that means the same thing. So we use literally as an emphasis when we're we're talking but we don't need that in written for in formal written form in formal written uh compositions lots or lots of just make use of many or much better of would have should have could have are incorrect you should use would have should have could have instead on account of just use the word because I tell you the word because is very important and you will know how beneficial it is to use it okay only um, okay look out for a placement don't write he only kicked the ball 10 yards when you mean kick the ball only 10 yards okay so just look out for the placement only we don't need to eliminate it it's okay to use it but be careful with the placement uh go back to our lesson of uh, misplaced and dangling modifiers plus no no just use the word end point in time at this time this sounds better or now so as to uh just the word to will do supposed to used to okay um we used to all right don't forget we're talking about the past tense here supposed to used to uh this is a grammatical error all right because when we're saying used to it's an action that we have done before we did it before and yeah we're not doing it now right so it's past tense through uh make sure it, we're talking about the spelling here till just use the word until or double l try and this is the example that we used a while back don't try and do something just try to do something and the most common mistake very really quite and other intensif uh, intensifiers like basically these words seldom add anything useful they are unnecessary and should not be used in academic pro so try removing them okay it's like what i said it's a habit and we should get rid of those so there you go uh, i hope that i was able to help you out with this topic today and i want to thank you for your time and uh, in case you're curious about the programs that we offer please do visit our website that that is put at or uh, go to our facebook page that's facebook.com slash thank you so much for your time and see you again in the next video bye bye